Hello everyone and welcome to this video about how to make a texture map for our materials. And what we're going to do is make a decal that we can easily change what textures on there. And what we're going to do is basically divide up a texture into uh, a grid and be able to change what part of that grid we're going to do. So it's all about manipulating UVs on a texture. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we achieve this. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what we mean by a map for textures. So it'd be useful to do things like this, where you can put this sign up here. And just make sure it's the right way around first. Escape down. And let's say we want to change what sign it is. Well, we can make that easily changeable with this slider here. As easy as that and i can drag out more of these and i can drag out what these are and this is all using just one single texture okay so we're going to go through the process of how you set up something like this and this is using a uh, a map where a texture is combining multiple textures all into one so first of all we have to explain how this is built so what you got to do is create a texture like this okay we call this sometimes a sprite sheet and in here we've got, uh, as you see, each image laid out sequentially, like so. Now, to help you de demonstrate this, I'm going to hide these and bring them some digits instead. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 15. So there's 16 slots. Now, the size you do this thing is totally up to you, but I'd recommend something quite large, because essentially what you're doing is you're cutting the image down to 4 by 4. So if this is uh, 2048, these will actually be uh, 512 each. Okay, so be aware of that when you are making the size of these, but you want to err on the side of making them a bit bigger than you think you will need them for. So once you've built this thing up, it's just a matter of just placing them in the right order. And it does help to try and align them as best you can if you, if well, if, if that matters for what you're trying to use it for. But line them up like this, okay? Now, once you've got that and built with your images like this, we can then export them and bring them in as PNGs with a transparency, so hide the black background, and bring them into Unreal. So once we're in Unreal, uh, we're going to, uh, let me just make, I'm gonna make a new one. So if I make one based on my number map here, I'm gonna create material and open this up. And if I, make this a bit easier to see. I'm going to change this to be a plane. Okay. And we're going to make the alpha here go into mask of this. Just so you can see how this works. So I change the mask. Put the alpha mask on there. So there's our numbers going on there. Okay. And I'm actually going to bring that into emissive as well. Yep. Makes it a bit easier to see. So how does this work? Well, first of all, you have to understand how UVs work. So UVs are the coordinates we give a texture and they go from the top left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner. And the default UV is in what we call a zero to one space. So it starts at the top left with zero, zero, and it goes to the bottom right at one, one. Okay, and then it follows that sizing by default for all your textures. So this texture here is mapped between zero and one. And we can see that actually, if I bring in my texture coordinate node, shortcut is U left click. We want this and I can plug that into UVs and I can change here the tiling here. So you see the tiling is set to one. If I change that to two, index it will see it happens twice now horizontally. If I change it in V, it happens now twice horizontally and vertically. Okay, so we get quadruple. But the same can also be applied when we want to make it smaller. So if I put in 0.25, I'm now only gonna get one line. 0.25, I'm only gonna get one row. So now I only get one number. Okay, and if I wanted to take that same theory, if I wanted to get the number one, which is the second row in, U tiling here, I can't just say 0.25, add another 0.25, because we get this problem, okay? So how does this work? Well, first of all, we have to just keep tiling to one, one. And we're gonna take the UV texture coordinates, and we're gonna divide it by four. Now, the reason why I'm divided by four is because I've got a four by four grid, okay? So let's do divide and put in four. And if I just plug that in as is, you'll get zero, like the first index comes up, okay? But we obviously want to make this changeable. So the way this works is we have to add a value to it. So if I do add, 
and plug that in there instead. If I add now uh, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.25 to this, we're now going to get number five. And you're thinking, wait, why is it five? Well, if we go into the texture, if we're uh, starting top left here, if I add 0.25, we're going to the right by a, a section, but we're also going down a section because 0.25 has been added both on the U and the V coordinate. So it's going down to five here. So what we need to do is split this up. We can't just have 0.25 as we want. So to split this up, we're going to do append vector. So now we can handle A and B, which is going to be our U and V coordinates. And what we can do is have a, uh, same as we've got here, we're going to have a value divided by four. So divided by four. And that gives us our 0.25 sort of difference each time. And I can take this zero here, change it to like one, for example, and plug that into there. And the append now, if I were to put that as zero, you'll see it now go to one because I've added one times 0.25 into it okay so i've got one divided by four it's 0 0.25 0 0.25 in the uv uh, in u coordinate v is set to zero so therefore it just goes along one horizontally if i change this one here to 0.25 then it's going to be 2.5 in both of those instances if i change this down to zero it's going to go down to four because that is the one beneath zero okay so this coordinate is how i change the x and this coordinate is how i change the y but Let's think about this in a more clever way. We don't want to just give coordinates, okay? We've got an index per one. We've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 16 different indexes. Well, I want to make it so just one slider will change all of that. So how do we do that? Well, by using this same divide here. So let's think about this logically. If this number is set to 5, divided by 4 gives us 1.25, okay? So 1.25 onto the append gives us the same five here. Now, why is that the case? Okay, so 1.25 onto here, it's actually gonna go off the map here onto the next map, but the next map is set to wrap. So it's gonna be sort of repeating texture each time. So we're going 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So the one just means it's wrapped to the next size, okay? But I want it to go down. Well, what if I took that first number, 1, and use that to indicate it going down? So what I'm going to take here is divide here, and I'm going to do floor. Now, what floor does, it rounds a number down no matter what it is. So it's 1.25, the value becomes 1. If it is 1.75, the value becomes 1. If the value is 3.5, it becomes 3. Okay, it just rounds it down no matter what. And that's our floor there. And with that, I can now got another dividing uh, number I can do. So I'm going to do divide and put that as point, uh, no, sorry, point 0.4, there you go, and put that into the append. And now I can customize this value a lot nicer. So I've got 5 here. If I change that to 10, we go down to 10. If I change this to 8, it goes to 8. Yes, yeah, so it's going to each index index that I specify. So let's take a look at what happens if I choose 8. So 8 divided by 4 gives us 2. So 2 is going to be added into the appendix here, 2. The, um, the uh, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Floor that is 2 divided by 4. 2 divided by 4 is 0.5. Okay. And it's going to go... Uh, no. Uh, yeah, 0.5. So then it's going to add 0.25 onto that because that's what we're doing here. We're adding 0.25. So we're adding that onto there. So 1, 2, it comes down there. Okay. 2 divided by uh, 8, sorry, divided by 4 gives us 2. 2 on here onto the add means nothing, no difference. It's going to be wrapped again because it just goes to the next line each time. Yeah. So if I change that to 9, 9 divided by 4 equals 2.25. So 
2.25 goes into here. But as I say, it's wrapping, so it doesn't matter. We're going to go wrap over to the next line over there. Okay. And that's essentially it. That's all we've got to do here to make it work for any texture we put into here. So if I go to my texture now and change this to my signs that I've made and change this value down to, say, 4, you can see our individual signs. So what's left is to make this a thing a variable. So I'm going to right click on my scalar, convert to parameter, and we'll call it index. And then it's to make the rest of the uh, decal. So I'm going to make it a decal. I'm going to click on my node over here, change from surface mode to deferred decal. Blend mode, we're going to change to translucent. And I'm going to make the alpha go into the opacity. Okay. And we're going to... So it disappeared from this window, but that's totally okay because when it becomes a decal, you'll be able to see it. So we're going to go create our decal actor. I'm going to go in here, right click, create blueprint class. And we're going to search down here for decal actor. And we'll call this one decal signs. Open this up. And in here, we're going to set a decal to our material. I think this new one was number map, wasn't it? So we go number uh, map material and compile that. I'm then going to go to construction script and tie that to a variable on here. So I'm going to call this one index and make that an integer. Not a construction script, I just need to make a dynamic material. So dynamic material instance, choose our number map mat. From the return value, we're going to set a scalar parameter value. And the parameter name is going to match the same name that we put into the material. So it has to be this one, index. OK, so set that to index. And the value is going to come from our index rebel here. We're going to plug that in like that. And what I'm going to do with the index here to make life a little bit easier is I'm going to change the slider value to go between 0 and 15. And the value range go between 0 and 15. Okay, so make life a little bit easier. And we'll make that editable like that. And the last thing we've got to do is just apply this to our decal component. So decal, set decal material. And we're going to apply that reference there to it. Hit compile and save. So now all I have to do is drag out my decal for signs. Let's rotate around the right way. Let's get it down. And I can change its value over here. And it's very easy to add more of these. And what's really nice about this is that these are actually really optimized because our material is calling just one texture. It's only one draw call, okay? So therefore, it's really, really simple and really good for memory for it to load up that one texture. So rather than having a numerous amount of textures that we can load up in one scene, we just have to, we've got all these signs we can put in our scene and they all can come from one texture file. And this is how a lot of games, especially... Um, some games that are meant to run on smaller, uh, less powerful machines, such as like Minecraft on like mobile and things like that, they use a lot of this technique where they're just mapping to individual UVs on a map. And you can go a bit further and add some colouring and tinting to these things too, so it can be quite um, stretchy with what you can actually achieve. So there you go. As I said, it's super great to use something like this to really optimize your game if you can afford to. So you can easily just do one texture call and that's it. It's really simple. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more video content like this, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early before everyone else. Massive thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again. See you next time.